Welcome back. We are glad, uh, glad you are still with us. This is Good Morning Kenya. I am Jane Wamboy. In case you are just joining us, Karibu Tana Sana to this conversation. We'd love to hear from you. So why don't you go ahead and talk to us using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya on Twitter at KBC Channel 1. Ever remains to be our official station handle. My handle is at Jane Wamboy. Now today we are expecting the uh, Her Excellency Samia Suluhu, the President of Tanzania, to jet into the country in the early hours of this morning she is expected here in our country for a two-day state visit and ever since she assumed office as the president of Tanzania a lot has been said both good and bad both critics and experts have had their fair share of opinions to express in regards to her presidency but today we are also here with professor Anna Tibaijuku who is the former executive director at UN Habitat as well as a former member of parliament of Mulebo South in Tanzania to also help us understand what her legacy has been and how we should also just look forward to how her presidency will be for the remainder of the late Magufuli's term. Thank you for staying with us, Professor. Thank you, Jen. All right. Now, to get to some more information, you know, and let's just start with what the critics are saying. And we are glad you are here to help us understand, you know, um, to shed some light in one way or the other. But we have had critics who are saying that, you know, she has a deep desire to sort of uh, turn a new leaf when it comes to how Tanzania has been uh, dealing with her neighbors and especially looking at international relations. And critics are saying that she is going against the grain of what Magufuli had set in place. Is this something that you feel holds any water? Well, I did, I, in fact, I think Jane, it is unfounded. Mm -hmm. Tanzania has always been very much a, a regional actor in the East African community, in SADC, on the African continent, beyond at the United Nations. Uh, so where is this uh, coming from? And as I said, Tanzania is run by the Chama Chama Pindus, the political party, and the, the party has always been internationalist, uh, both in Africa and beyond. The liberation struggle. Uh, so President Samia Suluhu is doing the right thing to, to reach out, to reach out with our neighbors. I'm really pleased, as I said, she's coming to Kenya, starting with our brothers and sisters in Kenya. And, and she, will, she, go, she will definitely do more. Uh, because uh, there is uh, the fact that President Magufuli had to do some things in Canada and was focusing on that has never meant that Tanzania is a socialist is going it alone. Oh no, Tanzania is very much on the international and regional stage. All right, and you know. Um the thing that most people or other critics are choosing to focus on is in regards to how uh, the late Magufuli was handling conversations around um, COVID-19 in the country, conversations around press freedom and also state visits because, you know, the last time we did have a head of state from Tanzania in Kenya was five years ago. So looking at how Her Excellency has been handling the situation, how would you like to reassure those who have um, just criticism to offer when it comes to how she's... Uh, executing her leadership you know jane any any successful leader moves on you, you have mm. to have your own vision and move on i mean yeah. let us face it uh, the late president magufuli is gone before the lord he did his bit he did his best now we have president samia so i feel that people who are lamenting about the past and what this other guy did we should focus on what is she planning to do what is she capable of doing and i have told you that i know her i worked with her in cabinet she's very very capable and she's very much capable and she has a lot of experience in, in, in politics but also she worked for the world food program for many years in, in zanzibar she was coordinating that program uh, she has a lot of international exposure she went to manchester she she, she knows the world you, you know so now she has the chance the responsibility and she was vice president for five years under Magufuli, and she was the one covering international relations. I know, for example, she visited Kenya when she was vice president. Little wonder that she's coming back to Kenya as her first country outside Tanzania. Uh, so really, if there are any fears in Kenya, let me tell you that those are over. Regarding the COVID-19, I mean, Jane, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, East Africa, we are really hopeful now that the, we are happy that the vaccine is now finally 
there, but as you know, we are the last on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, so COVID-19, she has already made it very clear. In her, in her maiden speech, she said she's going to put up a special committee to look at you know, the whole COVID-19 issue. But I must say that Tanzania has also been sort of getting bad press on COVID-19 than the reality on the ground in terms of the social in terms of sanitizing, mm -hmm. in terms of even getting the vaccines, if we finally get our shares, you know, we, we are a middle-income country now, but we are still a least developed country by, by, by United Nations, uh, you know, criteria. So we need all the help we can get from neighbors, from the international community. And COVID-19 in Syria, Tanzania has taken it seriously. But we also think outside the box, while we are waiting for these international vaccines, we must all use our own local indigenous knowledge to survive. That is a survival strategy. That is denying that modern science, when it finally comes, it should find you still alive, so you have to do something. So I would like to say that this fears about COVID-19, I must say there has been a lot of propaganda and negative press than the reality on the ground. And would you um, be in a position to maybe express confidence in the sense that it under her leadership and looking at um, all the methods she's looking to help contain COVID-19 in the country, will she be able to sort of um, reset the clock on COVID-19? You know, just looking at what um, so many other countries have had to experience when it comes to COVID-19 with maybe a hard lockdown, uh, the state of the economy and getting to address concerns of small and middle scale traders especially? Yes, Jen, the, these, these hard, hard lockdowns and things like that, the reality on the ground, even for, I can vote for the rest of Africa, and I know it very well. You know, I was in Kenya for 10 years. I know, I know, I know these regions very well. Yes. But how can you lock up when people have a hand-to-mouth situation, when you have no capacity to distribute food to reach everybody? You know, you, you cannot really have a hard lockdown. But in terms of taking caution measures that that is being done and and under president Sami, as i said uh, maybe the way you convey the message has not come out clearly people so that people in tanzania for example social distancing is a must and uh, in terms of if you now you want a hard lockdown to lock down the economy then you must have the capacity and capability to feed the poor the people yes. who get their daily food every day, even in Kibera. If I try to, my friends in Kibera, I would like to salute them. I hope they are fine. I worked there for many years. They're now, if you, you say today. You, to go down Kibera, you have to go there and distribute food. I don't know whether you have been doing that, but if you have not been doing that, then you are unfair on the people. Having said that, caution must be taken. And by the grace of God, uh, the casualties are there. We are now scared about what is happening in India, for example. But uh, in terms of the death toll from COVID-19, because of all these uh, combination of measures, the modern ways and the traditional ways, we are where we are. And we are hoping now that the vaccines will come, that we shall not be isolated, we shall also get the vaccines, and, and we shall survive. Nobody is against science, but science has to find you still alive, Jen. If you sit down idly doing nothing, even science might find you a dead person. So COVID-19 is a priority, and it is her priority. President Samia has made it her priority. She's already putting up a committee, the Minister for Health, they're doing everything. We are trying to revive the count. You see now there's this thing about the, the count. Tanzania has about 60 million people now. Only one test center. How can you keep the count, if I, if I may ask? Very you good see? question right there. Now, um, yeah. getting to this two-day state visit that Her Excellency will be on um, as of today and tomorrow here in Kenya, Conversations will be around trade, tourism, and of course, majorly people-to-people -people relations. Let's just have a quick look at trade. Um, there has been uh, a lot of tension when it comes to border relations more so. But looking at this bilateral talks that are set to happen today and between today and tomorrow at State House, what are some of the benefits that you feel both countries are going to get from these talks that will be happening? I am really very happy that they are going to be uh, the, 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 the mission, the visit is focusing on trade issues because that, that's the economy. As I said, she's very much focused on improving livelihoods in, in households. You cannot do that if people are not trading, people are not producing, uh, if trade is not flowing and impaired. 
And, uh, you know, occasionally there are these flips of tensions at the border. You hear this, you hear that from Kenya, from Tanzania on both sides. I, I think that our two leaders, when they meet now, when President Samia means President Uhuru, they can un iron out all these differences. Uh, they are not in anybody's interest. And, for example, recently there was a fracas with maize. People said that there were aflatoxins. All of a sudden, maize from Tanzania was supposed to be poisonous. I said, eh, but... Maize from Tanzania and maize from Kisi, what is, what's the big difference? So I would really hope that under the, within the East African trade protocol, we should now, this is the time now, to move on quickly, to remove the differences and to allow free trade, because free trade is finally in the interest of everybody. You see, Kenya, definitely you are more advanced, there's a relative advantage, but we are also quite well, well off in terms of natural resources, in terms mm -hmm. of production potential, and united, we shall do much more. Africa is about uniting within our regional borders to promote trade and development. Absolutely. And of course, we cannot talk about trade without having to link it to tourism because it still stands to be one of the biggest sectors in both countries. And how do you think this bilateral talks between Her Excellency Samia and our President Kenyatta are going to benefit both countries, especially focusing on tourism, which is one of the sectors that have been heavily affected, at least from what we have seen here in Kenya? By, more so by COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. Trade, trade is always in goods and services. Uh, now, you can look at trades. Trades in goods, I think, actually has been very uh, well. It has been moving on occasion. As I said, if we, we are in our differences, some of them are cooked by parochial vested interests and mining trade, but also organizing businesses. Uh, in Tanzania here, I am right now speaking from Dar es Salaam. We have quite a vibrant Kenyan uh, companies working here. We would also like to see reciprocity with see vibrant Tanzanian-based companies also working in Nairobi, working in, um, in Mombasa and, and places. And as I said, bringing this COVID scare under control uh, with care. And as I said, also, but being truthful about things. Also, we need to be truthful uh, about the situation and also our realistically, what can we do? Uh, so I think that trading goods uh, is something that should really proceed uh, without any hindrances. Now, there's still a question of trade in services. For example, in Kenya, uh, some of the people trying to work in Tanzania, Kenyans trying to work in Tanzania, sometimes they have met problems. Likewise, Tanzanians trying to get a job in Nairobi. There have been some discriminatory practices. I'm, I'm, I'm aware, aware of the tricks. Either your CV will get lost or something like that. I think we must realize that we promote trade both in goods and in services. And in the end, it will be a win-win situation for everybody. Absolutely. And that brings me to the next aspect, and this is people-to-people uh, -people relations and also still looking at the fact that tourism is right at the center of this people-to-people -people relation and even just starting with the heads of state as part of the East African community. For somebody who might be looking from, you know, an... Um, aerial point of view might not really understand why this people-to-people -people relations between the two countries is important. Maybe you could help um, just better paint a picture of why some of these aspects that revolve around people-to-people -people relations are key to, you know, building a East African community that is united. Then it's about people. And as I said, our leaders. So this morning, by the grace of God, we are going to see President Uhuru hosting President Samia. Uh, and these are showing the way. So the next thing will be Jane, you and I at our level. So uh, people to people diplomacy is very important and the key and is a basis for everything. But also, we are the same people Swahili, Abari mm. Asubui. We speak the same language. Yeah. <laughs> so we, there's no barrier in terms of communication among our villagers. And if you look at our geography, if you look at the Maasai village, if you are a, a, a Maasai from Kenya, a Maasai from Tanz Tanzania, it's very difficult to separate. If you, you see we are of common heritage, we are of common background, and our fate is intricately linked. Anyone who thinks that you can be you can build an island of prosperity in Kenya when there's poverty in Tanzania is just an illusion. Vice versa. You cannot have a prosperous Tanzania while Kenya is in misery because your neighbors will also define your own existence. So people to people diplomacy is very important. Promoting peace, stability, uh, promoting terrorism. In 1998, we were the first victims 
the double bombing of Nairobi and, and Dar es Salaam should never be forgotten. That shows you how close we are linked. That's why we must also make sure that our Bijana, our young people, the youth, they interact, they understand each other, they share, they learn from each other. And I feel that this visit is historical because the leaders are setting the trend. They are telling us that, ah, you guys, we should be talking to each other. So if they start at their level, and then it is for the rest of us to follow. Absolutely. And now just moving to some international relations, you know, um, from past experiences and from what we have seen, there have been some strained relations when it comes to how Tanzania has been operating, and especially within the East African regional bloc. And just looking at how or rather what is cut ahead for Her Excellency when it comes to reaffirming and just ensuring that Tanzania is part of the East African community. How do you feel this trip is contributing towards reassuring the rest of the East African bloc that Tanzania has been and is part of this community and is willing to work together with the rest of the countries? Yes. Well, my interpretation is, and I would like to repeat what I said earlier, uh, that uh, President Samia is actually there to clear if there were any misinterpretation of situations or misunderstanding. I think her maiden visit as president to Kenya, in the neighboring country, the regional hub, uh, says it all. And really, uh, as I said, other than maybe you can you, you can also exaggerate differences. I was not aware of any serious tensions between the mm. East African countries. I think our presidents were always working together. President Uhuru came here for the body of President Magufuli, which was very much appreciated. And he spoke very well. He's also Mananchi observed the, for example, when there was a, the prayer time during his speech, you could see him saluting. You see, he's a Mananchi here. He knows all the all the traditions, the rules, the customs. So let, let me say the following. Let yes. us adopt a forward-looking positive agenda. And let us not hammer on the past. And if, if there were misunderstandings, they are now solved by destiny, by faith. President Samia is in charge of Tanzania, and Tanzania has never been an isolated country. From our founding president, Umari Nyerere, uh, I mean, he was a household name in, 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 in Kenya, as much as the Kenyatta, the founder, as much as... So you see the East African community, we are working together. We have some regional projects, for example, with Uganda. We have the Uganda oil pipeline. We have other things. And I really expect now to see a scaling up uh, of, 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 of joint East African community investment activities. And really, Jane, in some, play, in some, uh, in some areas, mm -hmm. like in research, like this COVID-19 you're talking about, we need economies of scale. So we need to work together. We must also go back to the 1977 agenda in the old East African community and revive some of the East African community common services. Because you see, we, we are growing, we are improving, but let us face it, united we shall be stronger. So I really hope that during this meeting, they will also explore ways of having regional projects, how we cooperate in terms, for example, of the trade regime. Uh, Kenya is a middle-income country for some time. Kenya has a, an EPA with the European Union. Tanzania is a least developed country. So there are some things to be sorted out, but amicably with a positive mind, knowing that we are, we are all linked and look, we have our common purpose. We must work for our common interest. And I think that uh, this visit, for me, my interpretation, I believe this is what the president, the presidents are trying to tell us. Absolutely. And, you know, also while, you know, uh, during this state visit, she will be having a session with um, the executive women in business here in Kenya. How does this also translate to encouraging more women to take up um, business opportunities in Tanzania and how they can also work together cross border, women especially? Well, that, that, is, that is also wonderful because, as I said, I mean, uh, President Samia uh, Suluhu is, in fact, a, a golden opportunity, a god sent opportunity. I must say that for me, on my part, I have been a, a female act, gender activist for all my life, and I was not expecting to see this, uh, uh, th this turn of events, but that is fate. She's now in charge. I'm very happy she's also meeting the business women of Kenya. I know she's traveling with a business delegation from, from Tanzania. 
at the mm. Tanzania Private Sector Foundation. I think they, they are also some of the people are joining her are interest there. And uh, uh, this is this is it. And for women, I am now a retired person, as I said, but I'm also encouraging young women here in Tanzania to form businesses, even big businesses. Why should women not only be confined to small businesses? Women should also <laughs> go into the big businesses, organize internally yeah. and externally. And I'm very happy that President Samia is also going to be talking to the Kenyan women. And I can appeal to them that those in a position to do so, they should also look at for women uh, business partners in Tanzania, also in some big business, you know, because I know Nairobi, I know that some some women there are quite good and big in business. Absolutely. Now, as we draw the conversation to a close, maybe um, for both Tanzanians and Kenyans, of course, this uh, state visit, of course, will be aired live in Tanzania and both in Kenya. What will be your message to Tanzanians who would, you know, be tuned into this uh, meeting that will be happening later on in our state house here in Kenya. Your message to them and maybe what are your expectations, very individual expectations from this visit and your message to fellow Tanzanians? Yeah. Well, for my fellow Tanzanians, I can say what Tanzania was cutting your horses. This, this is a time. <laughs> this is a time to see what our leader is doing. She's yes. opening up and she's encouraging us also now to within the restrictions of COVID-19 to look for partners in Nairobi uh, and beyond. And Nairobi is also linked to the rest of the world uh, to do business. So I, that, uh, I see this as an opportunity uh, to be taken, to be grabbed, to forget whatever small difference there might have been in the past and move forward and grab the moment, take advantage and solve our problems. She's very much also on health. Social services are very important because she says, as women, the healthcare sector, I have seen that she's a priority to make sure that uh, not only COVID-19, but we must also solve the other challenges of, of, the, of the health sector. And I have heard her declare she's aiming at universal, uh, you know, health insurance, for example. Not an easy thing for a poor country like Tanzania, but at least where there is, a, there is will, there is way. So this is a time for positive thinking, for asserting ourselves and for partnership. Absolutely. Now, there is a question that has come in here. I know you had touched on your personal expectations of this visit, but for the benefit of our viewers this morning, there's one Evans who is asking, what are some of your expectations from this visit? Maybe you could take that again for our viewer this morning. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, at the risk of, it, of repeating myself, Yes. My expectation is, <laughs> first of all, the event of itself is already setting the tone of where we are going, working together. And I must, as you know, I also know President Uhuru very well. When he was in the Slam 2014, I even was hosting him as Minister for Lands, and I escorted him all the way to Namanga. So I also know that as a very welcoming personality, very warm uh, and very sincere, friendly. And friendship is also the basis for economic development. So my message, my message is that let us grab the moment. This is this is an opportunity from God. Uh, we must take advantage of it and give both leaders our support. There you have it. That goes out to you, Evans, who had a question in regards to your expectations. We must all give our leaders the support that they need to unite both countries even more as we move forward as an East African community. We have been speaking with Professor Anna Tibaijiku. She is the former executive director at the UN Habitat and also a, femme, a former member of parliament rather, of Muleba South in Tanzania. Thank you so much for making time to be with us this morning. Thank you. All right. Once again, remember we are expecting Her Excellency uh, Samia Sulugu to be jetting into the country this morning for a two-day state visit courtesy of an invite from President Kenyatta last month on the 10th. Among the raft of issues that they're going to be discussing, they will be revolving around the trade, tourism, people-to-people -people relations to just see how we can better build relations between the two East African countries and the larger East African community as well. Remember, this is her second trip 
since she assumed office as president of the United Republic of Tanzania. And of course, she will be well received here in Kenya. Um, from what the communication that we have received is that she will be um, inspecting a guard of honor and they will, she'll also be honored with a 21 gun salute at State House and later on a dinner courtesy of the state. We will be here to keep you updated on all that and so much more as it continues to unfold. Up next, people and politics. Umeomoka kama hujaomoka kwenye quickbe ndio mambo yote hapa tuko na fridge kodi yake ni CM tuko na gas cooker kodi yake ni CK tuko na TV kodi yake ni TV tuko na simu aina ya Samsung ni SM ama Oppo ni Oppo my friend mahali popote unanitizama eka hizo kodi zake kisha utume kwa 4032353 4032353 alafu utakuwa unaomoka na hizi bidhaa kumbuka kwenye quickly ni bila bora zaidi kwa bei ya chini kwa chini next on you know a liar can live without a lioness. A fire can't stop without a lioness. Cause there is no prescription for me. She's the one, the only remedy. Tonight on KBC Channel One. Not today. I am out to do justice today. I have to arrange a charity of Chana Kyo's death. By wielding the sword act, His Majesty Ashok has committed a crime. And the punishment for that is death penalty. Joe, stop! Ashok! Move aside, father! Welcome back to the program. This is Good Morning Kenya and it is time for our next traffic link up segment. We are still looking at what is happening around uh, in Mombasa City rather. This is specifically around the Makupa roundabout and just again a quick look on why we are focusing on this particular road this morning. This is actually the reason as to why. One of those uh, busy busy roads was commissioned by the president and this is for the construction of that particular bridge in uh, December of 2020. Now just at the center there this is actually that area which they will be reconstructing. This bridge was constructed in 1920s by the British. Um, it has been in a very poor state, a lot of air pollution around this area just being caused because of, also of, of, of all these ongoing activities around the particular place. So what they will be doing is uh, just uh, expand the same same bridge to uh, making it a dual a bridge it will be costing a, around 4.5 billion kenyan shillings the process as it is set to begin will go up until 2022 and aside from that air pollution bit they're also trying to reduce the traffic congestion congestion along this specific area this is actually how it normally looks like oftentimes so this is a part of what they're trying to um, reduce in this specific area just the traffic flow making it easy uh, for uh, vehicles, those are the car owners as well as for the pedestrians there. So this is actually how it is looking like as of now. So why it was
was closed around March there. That particular two days was just to demolish the particular bridge before the entire construction begins. So right now, a very quick look on the traffic flow. Try to see how it is looking like. If at all things have changed or is the same as how it was earlier on. You can remember that it was just a smooth sailing. There was no traffic at all throughout the entire roundabout, given the fact that it's also one of those um, busy, busy roundabouts as it branches off to some major roads as well as slip roads. Now, this is the state of things. Um, as of now, around the roundabout, still not that bad. Um, in as much as, yes, traffic has begun to sl uh, slightly build up, but at least altogether it's a manageable kind of traffic, and this is why we're sporting that orange color. And again, this is specific to one of those sleep roads there as you get a branch off to Lumumba Road. Again, a quick run through of how it branches off one of those major roundabouts. As I mentioned, gets to come all the way from Mombasa Road as you leave the areas around Kibarani, branching through the Makupa roundabout, heading again still through Mombasa Road, and this is in Mombasa the city gets to branch off as well to Lumumba Drive and on the other side this is Tomboya Road so clearly just from the, the number of roads the major as well as the sleep roads that it gets to branches off clearly just indicates that this is one of those um, busy busy roundabouts due to that uh, due to that and when it comes to the traffic flow right now still Things are not that bad, which again, just as I mentioned, is really quite interesting because of those ongoing construction works there. Ultimately, you know, that will have resulted to that kind of heavy traffic. But as of now, this is still how it is looking like. Orange all, th all orange in some sections of that particular roundabout and on major parts, green all through, which just means there's no traffic moving at a very, very um, fast pace. Where there was traffic earlier on is on that section as you get to leave areas around Mombasa Road all the way coming from Kibarani still is the same situation there this is how it is looking like and again this is just specific to that area as you leave Kibarani coming through to Makupa on the other side it's green again no traffic at all this is how it was earlier on this is still how it is but again ultimately just around this particular section we expect to see the kind I mean of heavy traffic especially the moment those construction works will will begin uh, at a very fast rate but as of now this is still how it is looking like still as you leave the roundabout coming through to Tudor, one of those areas where there was still some ongoing road works this is how um, it is looking like as of now a bit different from how the other sections are looking like because on this particular one there's really that kind of heavy traffic moving at a very very slow pace and this is why we are seeing that red color also specific to that lane as you leave Tudor coming all the way before you get to the Makupa roundabout as well as you get to branch off to that particular section on the other side of Ronald Ngala Road still not that bad there green all through on that particular section some sections here and there where there's just a bit of a gridlock on that area so this is again why it really becomes so necessary for that bridge to just be reconstructed because of its poor state look at the number of roads that get to branch off on this specific one making it one of those busy busy areas as well as instrumental um, places in terms of also businesses around that particular place so an up and until that construction process gets to a complete in 2022, it only means that this becomes also one of those roads key, key in interest to try and see how all this process will be coming along and how it will all together affect the traffic flow around the same area. All right. So after the getting that traffic update, whatever is going to affect you uh, across the country, we are now on the next phase and this is people and politics my name is Victor Lowe, and let's get the conversation going you have been watching this show from 7 a.m. and it's still continuing right now we are going to shift gears to take you to what matters to you people and politics because politics run the world good morning once again my name is Victor Lowe. it me with me is studio I have Joseph Simeha still in the village uh, way back in uh, in Vihiga County. Good to see you, uh, Joseph Sibeha. Yeah, very very good. And as well as Dr. David Masanga, all the way from the United Kingdom. Uh, you will have to tell us why you are not around Kenya or Africa. That's the reason you will have to tell us later on in the program. And with and with me in studio, I have Dr. Joseph Rotich, who is also going to help me. Just to have a good talk, you know. Let's let's have today. It's um, it's Tuesday. As I always say, there's no gender balance here. But please, just forgive me. Um, it's just going to be an amazing show as always. Every Tuesday, 
we do it. Gentlemen, I have to give you uh, a mini tour to each. It, it was an amazing moment uh, over on Saturday when President Kenyatta said that, you know what, all the barriers and the cessation uh, were lifted. I believe this brought a lot of um, good fortune for almost everyone. Let me start with you, Simeha, from the village. Now that uh, you are the one who is feeling the pinch so much, how did you receive this information and this message from the president on Saturday? Thank you, Victor. First of all, I uh, wasn't feeling any pinch. In fact, uh, I told you this is bliss. Working from home in the village is bliss than uh, being in the city. So I actually was happy that uh, I wasn't locked up in the, in the city. And even though, I mean, first, and then I have to acknowledge that, of course, it was a relief for many people. Mm. Honestly, people who need to connect as families, people who need to connect in terms of business and commerce to move and so on. I did, I did see that from many people that it was a huge relief. And also it removes the rent uh, seeking and extraction uh, machine of the security services that, uh, you know, are supposed to be enforcing curfew for the benefit of uh, citizens, but uh, mostly using it for extraction and, and rent seeking. So that also was a relief for people, a relief for, you know, businesses that operate in transport uh, and generally just commerce. But um, for those of us who are working from home in, 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 in outside of the city, of those uh, urban areas, um, we're happy. It wasn't really having any adverse effect on us. And that's why, Victor, I'm uh, not about to come over to the city, whether you open or close. Uh, this is the best place to work from. All right, okay. Uh, good for you. People who've been working from home, uh, you had some reprieve. Um, let me just come back to Dr. Rotich here in studio with me. Dr. Tari, it was a good message and a good information to many Kenyans who've been saying, no, it was high time that it happened. I think, uh, Victor, yes. uh, the announcement by His Excellency the President to unlock mm -hmm. the five counties was, in fact, a sweet surprise to many Kenyans. Yes. Uh, bearing in mind that um, Kenyans have really suffered a lot mm -hmm. in terms of economic um, depression that they have experienced. You can remember, Victor, up to today, as we are talking, over two million Kenyans have lost their jobs. Mm. And um, we have over, I mean, several um, informal sector. Yes. Has actually almost come to standstill, where majority of Kenyans are actually depending on. Yeah. And uh, the pronouncement was well received. Mm. But uh, I want to add Kenyans that um, as far as the COVID-19 pandemic is concerned, we are not yet out of the woods. Yeah. The, the, the pandemic is still uh, serious. It is still devastating. Uh, the rate of infection is still high. The dead rate is still high. And that means that Kenyans must adhere to the Ministry of Health uh, protocols mm. if we have to succeed in this process. Yes. You find, Victor, that as we are talking today, as much as the unlocking has been done, even yeah. most of the hotels, as we saw it uh, yesterday, they are yet to come to terms. They are yet to believe that it is uh, been the already we, we are already free at last. But we need to urge Kenyans mm. that we must be more careful than ever. Yeah. The unlockdown that has been made, mm. or the that we the, the, the freedom that we are enjoying now. Does, does not mean that we already have the freedom yes. against, uh, b b b against the, pandemic. the pandemic. So it is my sincere request that we must mm. adhere to the um, Ministry of Health protocols yeah. at all times so that we can be able to grow our economy yes. and at the same time safeguard our health. Absolutely. Um, let me bring in Dr. Masanga here, all the way from the United Kingdom. Dr. Tari, good morning and good to see you once again. Um, Perhaps it, it, was, it, it was high time that the president made that uh, pronouncement. It was a Labor Day's kind of present to Kenyans. You know, the five counties locked, and you know Nairobi is the hub of business in Kenya. So it was long coming. What do you think? It was long coming. Yes, I agree. And I agree with my three colleagues. Yes. Uh, Dr. Rotich in the studio and the doctor and the Semenya. I agree. But we better go further. Mm. We better be careful. We better stand. It is you yourself. Mm -hmm. Begin with you yourself. And make sure you don't fall a victim. It is dangerous to fall a victim to this disease. This disease is not, and I repeat, is not visible. 
is invisible if it is necessary. Safeguard yourself out of it. Keep safe. Have your mask on yes. when you go to the public. Up here, it is partial lockdown. Mm. As most of the places have opened. Even the nightclubs are being tested. People are going in a few numbers. By 21st of June, I think Britain will declare uh, the, the disease an endemic. Mm -hmm. Endemic. It will be like malaria and uh, other things and the cough and so on. So they have tried, they have vaccinated their people. We have all got vaccination. Let's uh, stick there. And I want to take this opportunity in summary to thank President Uru Kenyatta, the Kenya government. People, let's give a credit. You have managed this thing very well. You have, you have tried. You have tried compared to some African countries where I receive reports. Yes. You have done it. Your model was the best. It came out the best. And I hope the visiting president of Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And you, you can, or you can ask why I'm wearing this is CCM <laughs> yeah. color. We, we, we'll, we'll get so, into the details of that shortly, <clears throat> Dr. Ari. Uh, just just yes. uh, about the visiting President Suluhu. And of course, you have touched on something quite fundamental here that. Um, uh, President Kenyatta has really tried. But you see, let me just bring in uh, Dr. Terry. In terms of economy, many people are not seeing it that way. Uh, it was like what they were, we were squeezed somehow in a box, but we are not looking at the positive sides of having the lockdown, the cessation, and all that. Well, it had an effect in the economy. But to accommodate Monainchi, what are we supposed to look at? I think, uh, Victor, uh, looking by the far we have come as a country. Yes. You can remember that um, when His Excellency the President took over mm. after uh, retired um, uh, His Excellency Kibaki, yes. Kibaki laid down a strong uh, infra infrastructural uh, foundation in this country. Mm -hmm. And it was a massive one. You talk about the thicker highway and so many other investments that have been put in place. Mm. And when this government took over, they took up uh, uh, what I can say um, a huge and a mega approach in the infrastructural development that we can witness, highways, uh, good roads, that we can witness today. And um, by that, um, uh, Victor, you, you, you know, Kenyans don't see that translating into money, into cash in their pockets. Mm. Because these are long-term investment that this country has actually ventured to. Mm -hmm. You uh, overheard yesterday the, 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 the minister, uh, Tan, is saying that Kenya is going for 1.5 trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. And in the same mouth again, that by the end of this uh, uh, financial year, mm -hmm. Kenya is struggling to attain the target of 1.4 trillion. Already they have attained 1.2. So in that uh, tone, uh, Mr. Victor, we, we, we are on the right track. But you see, we have to complete the projects that are already in place. Yes. The huge projects that we see on our daily basis mm -hmm. have to be complete. And this is part of the legacy of His Excellency the President. So mm -hmm. by the end of his term, he's supposed to have realized all his dreams. By realizing these dreams, they require resources. So we must borrow, Mr. Victor. We so we borrow. only have to tell Kenyans, yes, uh, as I gave an example last week, uh, Victor, mm -hmm. during the, um, uh, when the, 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 the I mean, the, what, what, I, what, I, what can I say? The most difficult time is yet to, I mean, yes, as we are realizing today, will be over very soon once we mm -hmm. realize all these investments and they will be in use. Mm -hmm. So in this case, like uh, I'm lucky, Victor, that I live in this century to be, to be able to drive myself to Mombasa in less than four hours Yes. through the SGR. I'm lucky that I'm able to go to up to Northeastern through a good road. I'm lucky that I can go to Western Kenya through a good road. In this century, it will, if it was not the loan that this country took, we will not be having that advantage. So what we want to ask Kenya is that... Uh, the problem that we are facing now as a country is a temporary problem. Very soon we shall see good things happening. Now those who will be investing on um, investing in the people, because uh, you, you, you are here, he's actually the deputy president, talking about the bottom of the economy. Yes. I mean, means empowering the, the, the law of the lowest. Yes. To be able to be uh, capacitated 
-hmm. as far as the 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 the, 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 the business, their business are concerned mm -hmm. so that kenya will now start using what has been laid down by his excellency the president okay. yes it is painful but yes. it is we, it's something that we must undertake as a country absolutely uh, let me just bring in simeha here to just to wrap it up briefly simeha it's it's quite uh, open that uh, Yes, we have to borrow, but then development must also happen. And as Dr. Rotich has put it, it's, it's just temporary. As we put it, ni kwa muda tu. So at the end of the day, we will see the results probably for the next couple of years to come. Are you buying the same idea? Not at all, not at all, Victor. I um, don't agree with the, what, the, oh wait, that is Dr. Rotich's uh, observation. That's Dr. Rotich's opinion. Mine is different. Uh, in, the, in the sense that um, COVID-19 found a bad situation economically in this country. Mm -hmm. it found a really bad situation from 2013. Um, the only thing I agree with Dr. Otich is that the Raila Kibaki government, a previous government, uh, you know, from two, actually from 2003 when they came into government, there was a bit of disruption 2007-8, but then again it picked up up to 2012, early 13 you could see the results of a semblance of good economic management. But immediately, this government of Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruta took over, um, we began to see uh, uh, things going south. Yes. That has been my observation. That remains my observation. That, yes, it is very good to see these uh, large infrastructure projects and so on and so forth happening. But then, when you fail to see the masses empowered to take advantage of these projects, then for me it is gloom because I'm, I'm very happy with what i mean and i agree with what he's saying wonderful to have sgr wonderful to have good road. i confirm that i drive on a good road from nairobi to western and so on but how many of us can take advantage of that good road so these things have to happen simultaneously with good governance good governance that brings in the masses of the people to participate in economic production, in economic activities. But if you leave out, because of bad governance, a lot of people are cut out. Corruption squeezes out so many people from participation mm. in economic uh, productivity. Then only a few participate and uh, take advantage of those wonderful projects that Dr. Rotich is talking about. So right now, my observation is a, a huge percentage of Kenyans are suffering economically because of poor management of the economy and because of uh, runaway corruption in our country. And they won't be able in any time soon to take advantage of those wonderful projects that we are talking about. You can put in place brick and mortar, but unless you also work on the softer issues, unless you also work on, 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 on issues like corruption, unless you also work on good governance, and unless you also work on what has been talked about, bringing the country together, national unity, so that we are pulling in the same direction, I do not think you achieve what... Uh, Dr. Rotich is saying we will we will achieve in a short while. So I, I beg to differ, and that that is my observation. Absolutely, uh, uh, and Victor. I can see Dr. Masanga is trying to nod yes. in disagreement with you. I don't know what you have to say, Dr. Masanga. I am um, today. I I woke up on the right side, on the right hand side of Adam, Adam Smith. If Adam, Adam Smith came to Kenya and saw Simeka speak the way he's speaking. I think you will die twice. I agree entirely with Rotich today, this morning. Infrastructure is the basis of any development. If you don't have infrastructure, if you have no infrastructure, forget. You, you know, Zemeka is talking about corruption. Those are secondary. Those are secondary issues. We can manage them later. We can mm -hmm. put laws. We yes. can. We are doing BBI. But what the teachers say is true. The, the Jubilee government took over projects that were supposed to be completed. That Simeka group left. Don't forget where who Simeka is. I know him very well, where he belongs. And I, I, I am not going to sit here to allow him to harm a Jubilee government. No. Ismeha, he did. It is true. You left us projects, and I'm not going to, to take any prisoner here. You left the projects. You expected Uru to do what? To leave them rot? Uru had to borrow in order to complete the project. Rotich is correct. Two. Who is not 
suffering. Show me one mm -hmm. country in the world which is not suffering. Show me. Show me one country. Even in Britain, you are talking of two million people not employed. In Britain, eight million. And the figure is going up. And these are people who can demonstrate and ban the palace. They can, they, they, anytime they can come and ban the Queen's palace. You are talking of two million. There are 20 million people not employed because of COVID. So, on this one this morning, the Jubilee government had to complete the project. Money had to be borrowed. There is no country that does not borrow. Even in Britain, where, we, where I am, borrows. I am a quiet city. But because it has a social infrastructure, you can't see they have borrowed. So let's not deceive our people that the borrowing is bad. We are bad off. Yes, mismanagement. So may I come back on your side and uh, give you a note there. Mismanagement of funds, yes. Accountability of funds, yes. Brother, you knock the point there. If we fight corruption, we shall prevent the funds being cheated, taken away by a few individuals. Mm. And for anybody who wants to do the economy after Uru Kenyatta, my friend Uru Kenyatta, the Pan-African, has gone. And I want to be candid and happy to be associated with him. That when he leaves, you need the structure, whether he's up, up, bottom, up, bar, up, whatever I have heard some words, up, bottom, bottom, up, I don't know. Simeha will tell me he's an economist <laughs> and a routine. But you need those infrastructure in order to, to transport your goods, in order when you could to take the goods. You will need Uhuru's legacy. Okay, all right. Okay, 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 doctor. On, on, on that note, on that note, it's it's quite evident that um, it, it has to be either way. We have to borrow and we don't have to borrow. But one thing that you've talked about is that, yes, we must borrow, but accountability and prudent use of resources is quite fundamental. And, you know, corruption has been uh, dotting this country for quite a long time. And President Uru Kenyatta has also put that spirited effort to make sure that victims and culprits are brought to book. Okay, gentlemen, let's talk about, um, we have a guest today coming in Kenya and uh, um, my colleague just talked about it uh, in, the, in the last hour with one honorable aunt by Juke, but we can never have enough of this conversation. Uh, let me start with you, um, Dr. Rotich. What, what's, what's, what do you take out of this one? She is in the country in the next few hours for the next two days. Uh, what do you think is going to be most important for her and then Kenya in general and Tanzania? I, I think, Victor, what we are looking forward to, of course, um, Samia. Mm -hmm when she took over, yes. by the time she was actually being, uh, when she was being sweared in, mm. it is like Kenyans were watching their president being sweared in. I Definitely. mean, the, there is a, a very strong relationship that Kenya uh, and the East Africa in general mm. would wish to have. Mm -hmm. Why am I using the word would wish to have is because of the kind of relationship that we have had with Tanzania mm. uh, under His Excellency the late uh, Makufule. Yes. You can remember very well, uh, Victor, that um, about uh, 6,000 chicks were burned alive yeah. Yeah. in the protest that was going to spread the flu. Mm -hmm. And then there has been a lot of uh, slow movement uh, in and out of the, our borders between mm -hmm. Tanzania and Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have seen also trucks which could spend several hours at the border not being cleared. So all these are indications that our relationship has not been uh, smooth. So the coming of uh, Her Excellency Sunhu to Kenya is a very positive indication, and it will indicate so many things. Yeah. As far as the bilateral relationship is concerned, our economic development in East Africa, yes. and more so between us and Tanzania, mm. it is actually, I mean, Kenyans are hoping that we are going to build that strong relationship where Kenyans will move freely to Tanzania without any hitch, where Tanzanians will move to Kenya without any hitch, and then we look at our tariffs, because if we have our tariffs right, lower our tariffs, so to enable our people to have that kind of bilateral, I mean, uh, trade relationship without any hitch. So in this case, we, we Kenyans have a lot of hope. And there's another additional thing, um, uh, Victor, that we have to look at it. The political um, uh, perception yeah. that we have. Mm -hmm. Her Excellency Sulu is the only uh, president, uh, female president, 
in Africa as we are talking today. Yes, yes. So in this case, why Kenyans were so much elated during the swearing in of the, this great lady was because we have had the gender issues for many years in, mm. in this country. Mm. Uh, we have had affirmative um, action that has elevated the, um, the female uh, leadership in this country to the level where we are now. Yes. And we are proud as Kenyans that the ladies can now dominate the very important positions in our country of leadership. Mm. And um, I was watching, the I've been watching the trend of this thing, but I go to the uh, judiciary today, uh, Victor, mm -hmm. look at the formation of all the heads of departments. You may be surprised that uh, majority, almost 70, 80 percent, or even not 90, are ladies. Yeah. And in this case, if Kome will win the day mm. with the kind of uh, smooth um, transition that is going on now, I think we are going to have a, a judiciary that is led by female. Mm. And um, I've been also watching what the, the development that has been happening, happening elsewhere. Yeah. I think very soon we shall have a, an affirmative action to protect the boy child. Mm. Because that is the trend that we are moving. So very soon we shall remove this word affirmative and maybe uh, open up for a democratic uh, competitive process yeah. that our men and women will compete on equal basis mm. without really looking at the gender or affirmative action to protect some particular group. Absolutely. So in this case, Kenyans are proud of her, mm. and they are looking forward that um, with a positive startup. Mm -hmm. We have heard she has talked a lot about um, the, the COVID-19 yes. pandemic, yes. and now Tanzanians are awake to the reality that mm. uh, it is real, it is there. And once we had, because we had the border problems where Tanzanians under Makfuli, they were, they were not respecting the issues to do with them, I mean, people being uh, tested mm. before they crossed the border. Yes, I'll, but I'll this time that. around, yes. uh, you can see the, I mean, uh, the Sulu actually is very positive and yeah. very, uh, I mean, very keen yes. to see that Tanzania is, is, is actually brought to the power of those people who are fighting the pandemic. So mm. in this case, uh, mm. we, ha we, we are hoping as Kenyans that good things will happen. Absolutely. Um, le let me just bring in uh, Simeha here. Simeha, your, your thoughts on that? She is uh, due to jet into the country for the next two days. What do you think is quite important is going to be on top of her agenda as she visits Kenya for the first time just uh, slightly over a month after she took over her office? Thank you, Victor. I think what is important is for us to reflect on the similarities and differences yes. between ourselves and the nation of Tanzania. And um, it boils down to what I was saying earlier. When you look at the foundation of our nation that Mwalimu mm. Julius Nyerere left in Tanzania, and you compare that to what we have as a foundation, you will, I'm hoping that one of these days I'll persuade all of you, including David Masanga, that we are building all this huge infrastructure project on quicksand. Mm. These are things we can bring down in one day because we are not yet a nation in Kenya. Because we all don't see those projects as our projects. There are millions of Kenyans, as compared to Tanzania, who are going to see, but already are seeing those projects as Uhuru Kenyatta's projects and William Ruto's projects. Why? Complete breakdown of national trust. Those things are important for development. That foundation that Tanzania has built, as established by Malimu Julius Nyerere, mm. defining who they are, or for the, and I admire them for, 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 for basing who they are on the African philosophy of Utu, yeah. which is one of the things, by the way, David Masanga, that we have put in BBI policy, that we need to think as Kenyans, as, as, as uh, President Sulu comes around, do we know who we are as a nation? Have we defined ourselves as a nation? Or are we just Kikuyu, Luya, Luo, yeah. Somalia, and so on and so forth? Those things are important for development. Otherwise, you have those huge projects, but you have a largely dying population, a largely illiterate population, breakdown in the, in the education system, a breakdown in public uh, service and public administration, looting governors left, right, and center, and looting national executive, uh, etc etc so as she comes here for me that those are the lessons i'm hoping we pick up and as we our government engages with her and her delegation those are some of the things which can borrow from Tanzania. i fear that um, although uh, the, the late john joseph pombe magufuli was building on that foundation mm -hmm. he was sadly in my humble opinion beginning to break down some of the building stones yeah because it that, that that foundation is not inconsistent with having a democratic society, a competitive mm. society, 
a pluralist society with the free press. The, the, they go together, you know, a foundation of Utu, Afri African philosophy of Utu, African solutions to African problems. And that's why I'm reluctant to take uh, Masanga's invitation to compare ourselves to Britain. I'm not even interested in, uh, I know it's important to, uh, to compare, but in terms of whether we are doing well developed or not, I'm not even interested in comparing ourselves to Britain. I want us to compare ourselves to what we can be. Mm. And we can only know what we can be if we sit as a nation, have a conversation, and look at our history, see where we are coming from, and then define where we want to go. Yes. That we can borrow from what Malimu Nyerere did. Not that he was fault, faultless, he had his, his faults, mm. but I, in, he did an incredible job in terms of building the foundation for a cohesive society in which people trust each other. Now, President Suluhu, with the promotion of um, you know, freedoms, uh, democratic ideals, that the, given the signs we are seeing, press freedom and so on, will hopefully now continue building on that foundation because you can build on that foundation without suppressing people like uh, John Joseph Pombe Magufuli was, do was doing. You can develop a country without suppressing uh, dissent, without oppressing people. And that is what I hope as we engage with the, the president of Tanzania, we can pick those lessons. And finally, uh, agreeing with the, what Rotich said, it is a lot more important for us as African nations, beginning with East Africa, including Congo, including Ethiopia, Somalia, Sudan, South Sudan, to trade with each other, to develop trading and social relationships with each other. We will develop faster than these uh, relationships we have with our exploiters. They are past exploiters, they are still present exploiters. And I'm not su suggesting that we cut off relationships with them. I am proposing that we prioritize relationships yes. with African countries. Mm. Then Masanga, that is going to be true Pan-Africanism. But uh, not when we cheat each other, but then we want a better relationship with Britain or the USA or Germany. Those are good friends of ours, but let them be secondary friends. Let us develop relationships with African countries first. Mm. All right, absolutely. And uh, doc Dr. Masanga, you've just heard what uh, Dr. Rotich and Sime have just talked about. What do you think are some of the diplomatic ties that we should expect from now moving forward, having in mind that uh, she went to, t to Uganda and signed a deal with the Uganda that they are going to have an oil pipeline from Uganda to Tanzania. And now she's going to be in Kenya for, the, for her first visit as the president. In terms of diplomatic ties, what should we expect? Briefly, Dr. Tari. Thank you very much. I will hit my points and I agree with Simeka. Mm -hmm. As a Pan-African, I want an integrated Africa. An Africa that trades with itself without barriers. As a Pan-African, I want an African that talks, not violence, but peace. Tanzania is endowed with peace. Tanzania think together, they have a social contract. Mr. Law, the only country in Africa that has a social contract is Tanzania. They have a social contract. They listen to their leaders. I grew up in Tanzania in 78, 79, when we were fighting Idi Amin Dada. I learned part of the philosophy of the Tanzanian people. I have shoot friends across back there in Tanzania. But they are all united. Even when their government is doing something which is not right, they will come to voice it without violence. That's one thing we, I agree with Simeka. Let's learn from them today. Are we united in Kenya? Are we united in Uganda? Are we united in Rwanda? Or war? As we sit here today, three of us and four of us in the studio, there is a looming war between Uganda and Rwanda. A very huge war. Simeka knows. For two years, the border between Uganda and Rwanda has not been opened. And the people are threatening, generals themselves, the two are threatening each other. I believe Madame Suru, being a, a lady president in East Africa, please, Your Excellency, I've already communicated something to 
to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Tanzania, try to ease that pressure so that we don't have a war. Point number three, the question of trade. These small, small hiccups at the border. You want to go to Tanzania, your passport is, as a Kenyan, is scrutinized more than the passport of a Ugandan called Matang. That, that attitude should end. Kenyans are scrutinized more in Tanzania than Ugandans. I went with a Kenyan friend in the Dar Salaam airport. He was, he, he was stopped. And I waited for him after my luggage. I picked his luggage. They were looking at his passport. I came back. I said, Jamen, Nukuzang, Shidagan. Oh, Tulikwana, Tunazumiza Apa. No, I said, no, this is an East African passport. So those small, small things that bring up and break up states will be solved. Another point is the question of women. I am very happy that you interview my colleague, a very humble lady of Africa called Professor Tiba Ijuka. This lady is a Pan-African. When people wanted to take Mugabe, when people wanted to take Mugabe to The Hague for this man controlling uh, shanties in Harare, Tiba Ijuka stood firm African as a head of inhabit of habitant and I said no we need such people Tanzanians are hard working people Madame Sulu will bring hope to Kenya will learn something lastly I hope she's also going to learn how to manage COVID-19 that's the elephant in the house. Okay. And let's be honest. Hakuna kubembeleisha na hapa. Absolutely. Sisi nataka siyasa. Ikuwe ya amani. Siyasa ya amani. Tuletu ya amani. Tutatu gana. So let's get Kiria. She has also to learn from the Kenyan counterparts. Yes. The Ministry of Health. The models. Let Tanzania learn. What type of models the Ministry of Health in yeah. Kenya have yes. used. To contain a disease. Because although this disease, if you contain it in Kenya, mm -hmm. and you contain it in Uganda, and you have not contained it in Tanzania, mm. you can't stop Tanzanians coming to Bihiga. In fact, Bihiga is very near there, where my friend has been hiding in the in in, 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 the, in, in, in the banana plantation is there. It's very near Tanzania. S so S we must. Simeka, you you have to defend yourself that you've been. You you, you will have to defend yourself that you've been hiding in, 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 in Vihiga. <laughs> Dr. Vasanya, yeah. let me just hold on. Sure. Dr. Tari, in one minute, let me just take a commercial break. The director says that we have to pay some bills and then we come back. Simeka will tell us why he's been hiding in Vihiga. <laughs> that is a good one. Uh, let's take a short break, gentlemen. Um, this is just it. We have just started. And you know what? Um, we still have so much more just after the break. So you don't have to go far away as I take my tea. You know, this is Good Morning Kenya. You can also take yours. We'll be right back in a short while. Stay with us.